Stalkup. I'm delighted to be here with you today. I'm with my friends Veronique and Francois in France. So this is a wonderful experience for me to try to make a little video for you to show you how we're going to paint. Just a little quick, easy box for beginners, right, that I hope you'll enjoy painting. You could put this on a tray or on a wooden box, a tea box, or um, on a plaque. Anything, oops, oh dear. <laughs> anyway, um, I hope you'll thoroughly enjoy painting this with us. We're going to um, kind of start from the beginning to end and we'll be getting ready to go in just a minute. Well, now we're ready to paint. This is our little project and we're gonna start out with another box and I'm just gonna give myself a quick little sketch for the shape of the basket. And you could make this a little bigger or a little smaller to fit the piece you're gonna paint on. Even though you could do it large or you could do it small. Uh, we will, um, if you're interested in a little pattern in the directions, we will have a little pattern available for you. But I really suggest you just freehand these flowers. It's like putting flowers in a vase. You can place them wherever makes you happy. It doesn't matter if they're not exactly in the same place. I'm gonna take a little bit of burnt umber and any brush, I have an angle shader and base this in with burnt umber. And it doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to make your basket weave on top of this. So just paint it in. This is acrylic paint, which means it's water soluble while you're painting with it. But once it's dry, it's permanent. So then we need a handle. So I just took the edge of my brush and I came up and I made just a little handle sticking up up here. Now, I'm not going to wait for this to dry. You could. You could wait and then come back and start painting your greenery. But I'm going to go ahead and paint my greenery in here. And I have a foliage brush. And this is a bristle brush cut on an angle. And I have a medium shade of green here. And I'm going to take my brush and tap right into the edge of that green. And then I'm going to tap on the surface. And you move your brush to the right and the left. And you're going to sprinkle some of this right down over the basket. No sense painting basket weave where we're going to cover it up anyway. I have a little bit of glazing medium here. I'm going to add a little bit of glazing medium as my green gets a little bigger. So that it's a little bit transparent on the edges. It gives it a little softer look. And I'm going to do the other side the same way. Uh, this is avocado or just a medium shade of green. It picked up a little bit of that burn umber because it's still wet, but that's fine. I'm adding a little bit of glazing medium again. And I like to make one side a little bit different than the others. And you kind of go in and out and in and out. And let the background show through a little bit over these edges instead of making it a solid, but it's solid in the middle where you started. Then I'm going to add a darker green, and I don't really need to clean my brush. I can just go right into that darker color, just tapping with the front part of the hairs, really, and add a little bit of that darker green, just kind of in the middle. Your flowers show up much prettier if you have good contrast under there. So now let's add a little bit of a blue shade. It's kind of an aqua color, kind of a middle value. Again, I'm tapping my dirty brush right in the edge of the color. I'm touching so lightly that it's not really mushing into that wet paint. The paint's still wet. I'm just barely touching, get real close to the surface and just barely touch and move around on your brush and it'll make nice little sprinkles. I'm going to add a little bit more. Instead of making doop, 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 little polka dots, you kind of want to run some of those together, even though they're going to be covered up a lot in this one. Kind of watch the shapes you're creating a little bit as you do this. Then I'm going to add a little bit of a bright light green. This looks like a little sunlight growing in there. Uh, here in France, in the trees in the background, you could see these colors. Just beautiful. So it's amazing how when you look out in the trees, particularly in the spring like this, the greens can be so, so vivid and you see this bright yellow green. And then you see the darker shades and you see a hint of the blue tone. So you really do see them. Take your camera with you. You'd be surprised what gorgeous colors. You think it's just green, but it's not. It's got lots and lots of shades in it. Okay, now 
I'm going to go back to the basket then while that's drying before we start adding some flowers in there. And I went to a small round brush. This is um, like a two round. And I'm going to bring it in a little bit closer so you can see. I go the right way. Ah, went the right way. There, you can see it a little better. And I'm taking raw sienna just on the tip of my little round brush. And I'm going to paint some lines. These would be the ribs of the basket. So they have to follow the shape. So where the basket is slanted a little bit out there on the end, my line's going to be a little bit slanted. But when I get toward the center, it's going to be straight. And then as you go out to the right, then I'm going to slant a little bit to the right so that you're creating the shape. So if this was a round basket, those lines would be rounded. So as you've got the ribs, then we're going to start going across one of those ribs to make it look like the weave of the basket. So now I'm picking up a little white and a little raw sienna, and I kind of just drug my brush through the color instead of mixing it. I just have a little bit of both colors dragging through, which is more natural looking than if it was a solid color. And I'm going from the outside across the first rib, stop before you get to the second rib, and then leave a little space and go across all the way down like a little row. Looks like a little ladder almost, doesn't it? Got a little blob of paint there. It's a polka dot. Then you go to the next row. Now this time what you want to do is like your fingers. You know, you stick this in between and go across the next little rib. And you want to make the last one go over the outside a little bit. So that first row now has a little hole. So go back and just fill that one in a little bit. Then you just continue on across. Sometimes they curve a little bit. If you were a good basket weaver, you push the cut those pieces together so they kind of touch a little. That's fine. You could use a smaller brush and have a much finer weave, or one a little bigger and have a fatter weave. So but this basket can be done bigger or smaller, really any size and any shape. I'm just continuing on across. Picking up a little more raw sienna as I go. Sometimes it's nice to have it a little lighter in the center, a little darker on the edges. Now for the handle, I just took a little bit of that same color. Got to be careful, that green's still wet. I'll stick my fingers in it, right? And just drag down a little bit from the top. And we'd call a basket done. All right, let's put a little bow in here. I've got a little round brush still, and I've got a little bit of white on my palette, and I wanted to make a pretty blue. I'm thinking here in France, you see so many things that are this wonderful, rich blue color, and uh, with yellow. So we're going to paint some yellow daisies and some white daisies. So I just mixed a little bit of the two colors together so I have uh, kind of a medium shade of blue. And to make a little bow, I'm going to start right here near the handle and I'm going to make just, that's my knot, right? And then if you make a C-stroke with your brush, lift so it comes back to a little fine line, then the second stroke is going to be an S. Push down and slide over. Makes a gentle S that makes a little pretty loop on your bow. Then the bow in this case looks more like a ribbon than it does a rope because it's thick and thin. So then on the other side I'm going to come down and if you wanted this to be a little bit on the sheer side you could add a little bit of a glazing medium to it. Again, two strokes, push, now lift. Now let's go up with the second one. Sometimes two little loops are prettier than just one on each side. And let's draw, I like mine a little bit lopsided rather than too perfect and smooth, so I made the second one go down longer. And it's sitting a little crooked rather than perfectly straight. And let's add a streamer, whoop. And add a little piece out the side so it looks like it twisted. And then we'll come back with another one this way. One way to keep your, your design nice and 
soft and kind of loose rather than too tight is to just do it. Practice these bows a little bit, then you'll be able to do them just fine. So we'll let that bow dry a little bit. And while it's drying, I'm going to start painting little flowers in here. And I have yellow daisies and white daisies. Uh, for the yellow ones, I'm using a nice, rich, medium shade of yellow. Uh, this is kind of like cadmium yellow. And if you start out by painting a little center first. So here's the center of my little flower. I just made just a little stroke across. Then I'm going to start painting petals. Now the petals come from the outside in. Let's come in a little bit closer so you can see this flower a little better. Then we'll back up again. If I stand the handle of the brush up nice and tall, how about if I lean it just a little bit so I can get my hand out of the way. And you're going to push down just a little bit on the brush and push and lift. See how that makes a nice little petal? Then go to the next one. And these are the two longest petals out from each end of that little oval that's the center. Then I'm just going to fill it in. Make it, and I have quite a bit of paint because the ridges in the paint make your colors much brighter than if it's too flat. Then make it look like you're seeing a little edge of the petal I kind of stroked across. So that's one. You might have a bud. A bud could be a little dot. And we'll go back and add a little calyx. A lot of times it's fun when you're painting a design to let some of your flowers touch. So if I lean a flower down here, and this one's going to be a little bit on top of that first one. And I'm a little bit on top of my bow, which is a, a little bit wet, but it's okay. Make it another one kind of hanging down. And a lot of times I suggest you start in the center like this rather than starting way up high because you need to make sure you have some flowers kind of for a focal point, kind of in the middle of something. When you say focal point, that's a part your eye draws to. And I like to make a little cluster of flowers, and they won't be the same. Each time I paint them, I'll put them in a little different place. And remember, it doesn't matter if they're different. Just kind of make a little cluster of two or three. And then I'll skip a space. And I'll put some more somewhere else. And I might well go over here and put one up there. I'm leaving some space for some white ones. I'm going to do all the yellow ones right quick. And I might want one out here. Now this is just like a half of one. This one's not going to have a center. And you could turn your piece around if that makes it a little easier for you. I can paint pretty good upside down. But if you can't, don't be afraid to turn it upside down or right side up. You know, so you can get to it better. Let's put it back down a little bit. Maybe back up so you can see it a little better now that I... If I can remember to go the right, ah, I even went the right way. <laughs> so let's put one out here. And I put another one out here. And like I say, it doesn't matter whether they're in the same place as they were originally or not. Just make sure you have some of your flowers touching each other rather than always side by side. I want to add one more in here. Sometimes I make them all the way around and I don't hesitate to cover up my knot. That was just something for me to aim for. I think it looks nice to kind of tuck some of your flowers right into that bow. Oh, let's add one up here. Sometimes it's kind of fun to put one over the background a little bit. And you can really put as many as you want. I'm going to put some white ones in here. So as I've added some yellow ones, let's add, let's add another bud hanging down there. Let's go to some white ones. So the white ones are painted the same way. Only I paint the center with white. Uh, I need something to aim for, and it's kind of nice not to have to worry about changing colors. I'll come back and put some yellow back over that center. So the center is white. And I'll come back and put yellow back over it in a minute. So there's one. And again, let's put another one over here in this side of the bow.
You can aim them better sometimes by turning it a little bit, so don't hesitate to do that if you need to. Sometimes it's easier to pull your little strokes than it is to push them, so don't hesitate to turn it. And I had one down here kind of hanging down. So there's again a couple that touch. One up there. You don't have to fill your bouquet up. You can have as many or as few flowers as you want. Think about a little bit the way the stems might go. The stems have to kind of come back into the center of the greenery a little bit. So you can't have one that the center's kind of hanging out funny. So sometimes when you get over here, you see how you can turn it and make it a little bit easier for you to paint the ones that are kind of going this way. So you can turn your piece as you work. And these are just little strokes with the tip of your brush. Okay, let's make maybe one more and I think that's enough to make a nice pretty little bouquet for us. See, because this one's kind of hanging over the edge, you have to think the stem comes back this way. Okay, that works. Now let's add a little bit of yellow back on those centers. I did give my brush a little swish. I'm picking up a little bit of that bright yellow. My, my, my white may not be dry, so instead of painting it in a smooth stroke, I'm tapping it. I'm tapping those centers with a little yellow. That Because centers are a little puffy anyway, it's okay if there's a little texture. And that way I don't have to worry about it picking up the white paint that might still be wet. Then I just kind of pinched out my brush and I picked up a little bit of raw sienna, which is that first shade we were using on the basket, um, on top of the basket. It's kind of a nice golden color, golden brown. And I'm tapping a little bit right at the bottom of those centers to shade them a little bit. And I can do that on the yellow ones too. I can add a little bit of that raw sienna at the bottom of the center. Just tap, tap. You can see the yellow is a little bit transparent. In a minute I'll add just a little bit of some lighter yellow on a few of those petals. Really can just make them come to life a little bit. Little bit on that one. That'll do it. Now on the yellow, okay, just let add just a little bit of yellow on some of those yellow petals. This is the lighter shade of yellow, kind of a lemon yellow or a zinc yellow or a Hansa yellow, just a lighter, brighter, and just make some of those petals show up a little better. Now don't do them all, just so the sunlight's catching them a little bit. You might do some on the right side or the left side, one or the other. Now all we really need to do is do a little bit of accenting on this bow. I like to highlight it a little bit so it looks like it's a satin ribbon. And I'm going to take a little bit of glazing medium that I put out on my palette and I'm putting the heel of my brush and this is a half inch, or actually this is a 3 8 angle shader, small shader. I like an angle because I know where the paint is on the point. And I'm going to come over here and get just a little bit of white paint on the point of my brush. As you look at the brush, you can see there's just glaze in the heel. Then you do want to, what you say, blend your brush on your palette a little bit. And that's so that the color kind of softens into the glazing medium and it's not too thick on the end of the brush. And I kind of do it back to back in this case. So if I blend it a little bit both directions, um, it's got a nice blend in it. If I keep this very flat to the surface, and you might turn it a little bit, what you're going to do is brush across, and this is a section of ribbon between here and here, and I want to highlight in the middle of each section. So if I brush across, the blend is already in my brush, 
so I don't have to work real hard and flip my brush over and do the other side back to back, right? And because of the glaze in the heel of my brush, I've gotten a soft, a soft blend on both sides. So then I'll go to the next section, which is this one. Do it kind of easy. Sometimes you mess up the edges a little bit and you can take another brush that's just damp and fix that if you do. But keep the paint that's loaded in this one because you can do several little sections before you need to pick up more paint. If I pick up a little more paint or glaze, I blend in the same place right on my palette. See, that one's got a little bump. So that's a good place to take another brush that's just damp. And see, just clean up the edge a little bit. Some, particularly when it's small, sometimes it's a little tricky to stay within that little piece of narrow ribbon, isn't it? So. so it makes that piece of ribbon just begin to shine a little bit for you. Right here where that one was, my piece of my uh, flower is kind of right there, and I just went right over it. Sometimes it just looks like the, the piece of petal is underneath and the ribbon's a little bit sheer, and you can see it through, so that's fine with me. If it feels a little dry, sometimes if you just put a little more of that glazing medium in the heel of your brush, that'll take care of Oops, I just caught a little more of another color. I don't want that. We'll just wash it out, get rid of that. I had a little yellow in there. It's like, ooh, I don't think I want yellow. Ah, now I caught something else. Well, we'll just get rid of that. You can see how easy it is to fix a mistake just going back and lift it off. <laughs> I'm making it worse, huh? You can't even see it. <laughs> there, got rid of it. So if you have a little mistake, remember it's water soluble until it's dry. So don't hesitate to just take a little water and take something off. We've all done that somewhere along the line. And that's part of learning how to paint sometimes is learning how to fix something. So if there's just a little bit. Now for a tiny bit of shading, you could use um, uh, a little bit of a dark gray or a black and you could add just a tiny little bit of dark. I'm just going to use a little more blue in a couple spots here. I'll add a little burn number to it and make it a little bit darker. Ah, that works. That makes a nice gray. So if you think you had one piece of ribbon on top of another, then you might have just a little bit of shading on the one underneath so you could see it a little better. So you still have glazing medium in the heel of your brush and a little tiny bit of color, very little color this time, to separate one piece just a tiny bit from another, to just divide the pieces. And it takes very little. See how there's just a little bit there? And I really, most places are in pretty good shape on this. I don't need to add, but just a little tiny bit. You don't have to shade parts you can't see, so I always wait till after I've painted my flowers before I do a little shading and highlighting. Then, how about if we add a couple little calyxes, just if I take my little brush again, and if I just take a little dab of that olive green, that makes a little button for the back of that bud. It makes a whole lot more sense. And there's a bud here. You might do the same thing. Maybe a little piece of a stem. A little bud in the back. A little calyx. So any of those flowers that did not have a center would have a little calyx, you know, a little piece in the back that kind of held it on there. And I'm not worried too much about stems. Then for finish and touches, I just took the tip of that little round and I used some of the blue and white again. Uh, oh, it's an ultramarine, nice cool blue um, or a royal blue kind of color. And I'm just tapping for little filler flowers with a little bit of, of blue and white. Now it's kind of mingled color, so as I tap, uh, it'll be lighter in some places, a little darker in others. And it, these might be little forget-me-nots, right? They're blooming along the road here and in Veronique's garden. 
and they're the prettiest little tiny flowers that make wonderful little fillers but I'm just dotting they're just little dots and that's really all we need to do you could finish your box by um, painting a little bit of the same blue color as your ribbon maybe on the edge of the box or your favorite color but it needs to be a color from your design just scattering around a few of these little and you can have as many or as few as you want And remember, as you get it all finished, you need to remember to sign your work. And it's a good idea to put a, a water-based varnish on top of this to make it a little more permanent. And I hope you'll enjoy painting lots of pieces. These make wonderful gifts for your friends. And wonderful little May Day present, right, for your friends would be how about a, a little piece you've painted with wonderful spring or summer flowers, the spring flowers in it. I can just see those as a great little gift. Here in France yesterday was May Day and they gave as a little traditional gift a little bouquet of Lily of the Valley. I couldn't think for a minute but they were the prettiest little fat flowers. They were just beautiful. I'm gonna have to go home and paint some for sure. There you go. Oh, well, I hope you've had fun watching this little DVD. I hope it made you all excited to go home and try it. Uh, hopefully we'll do some more in the future, and maybe there'll be some more little projects coming along. So I hope you enjoyed it, and happy painting.